Oh, welcome back everybody as always I am Technivorous. We are right where we left off. We're gonna create our first script for this game in just a moment But before we can create a script we need something to control so to make things easy for now I'm gonna bring in a primitive object and basically the way that you do this is you go to 2d object and Sprite we're gonna go ahead and grab a square now later on We'll fill this sprite and we'll be able to do some things with it for, for right now we're going to move it to about right here. This is going to be our dolphin. Uh, the dolphin will go up and down. The camera, we're going to go ahead and attach to it. So that the dolphin is always in this part of the screen. Because remember, we're going to have obstacles to avoid coming in from the right side of the screen. And we want to make sure we have plenty of time to avoid them. So, now if I were to start this game, nothing is going to happen. This is just a square that we can put a picture on later and we need to do some other things to it. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to um, add some properties to it and to do that we need to select it here and we need to drag this window back out because this is our properties window so we're, we're going to need this inspector here so square okay what we're going to do is add a component and physics 2D start with a box collider now if I zoom in here you can see a green line around this and I can actually edit the collider right here by making it larger or smaller I think I'm going to make it a little bit bigger that way eventually this is going to be a dolphin so he's going to be kind of twice as long as he is tall but I don't want to skew the scale until I get some of my graphics items figured out so now that we have that we're not quite ready for our first script yet we have a collider which means he can run into stuff we need one more component to make the physics work and that is going to be a rigid body 2D. So, now that I have these two things, I can go ahead and start the game. And you'll watch this. This guy will, s well, actually, since the camera is attached, let's detach it and show you. Gravity is going to affect this square, and it should just fall right out of view there. There we go. Now, if we put the camera back on the object, it is still falling, but the camera is locked to its position, so you can still see it. You saw it fall out of view here. And the reason you can tell that it's still falling is because if you select square here, the Y value is decreasing exponentially. So let's go ahead, we'll stop that. That's kind of cool, but the way this game is going to work is with kind of a buoyancy effect, so I want it to fall upwards, and I want to be able to tap the button to make it swim down below stuff. So what we're going to do in that case so we're going to grab the rigid body here. We're going to change the gravity scale to negative one. And if we unattach the camera one more time, it should go up instead of down, increasing on the Y value. So there it is, you can see. As I said, we do, however, need that, uh, that camera attached for now. We are going to add a script to this camera that will allow it to like stay right here so this goes up and down but it basically tracks it on the X coordinate so um, oh, for those of you that are maybe throwing some things at you a little bit fast let me explain a little bit more about the coordinate system and why that's expanding on the Y so uh, if you look here we have this grid and right now it's in two-dimensional space this, this 2D is clicked if I go to three-dimensional you can see these and these are the three axes of the game engine basically this green one is your Y, that's your Y value, okay? And if I go to the front view here, you can see there is an up and down and a left and right, and you can't see that third, that depth, uh, because it's hidden from the angle we're looking at it. So it does still take effect, but with the 2D engine selected, you don't really need to worry about it. We'll be putting things into layers. Uh, but basically, what you need to know is, this is the X axis right here, okay? and this is the y-axis so that's basically the most important part I think we need to take this get it down here I don't think you even saw the position changing let's run that one more time here the camera's attached to the square so it's gonna follow the square but if we select the square you can see the y increasing okay so that's perfect that's exactly what we want so now we need to go ahead and make a script. We're not going to do a movement script yet. 
Um, let's do, we're going to go to resources, scripts, and create C sharp script. We'll call this one dolphin. All right, so now we have our square, which is actually our dolphin, and we're going to put some controls on it. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and select the script, drag and drop it onto the square here, and you can see it shows up in its components. And then we need to open our C-sharp editing program because we created the C-sharp script. So let's click on this. It should open M Microsoft Visual Studio. It does take a minute, so bear with me. All right, it has opened up. Unity Code Assist is acting if asking if we want to use the plugin. We're going to hit yes. And basically, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. So in the update method, we are going to look for some input. So let's go ahead and type input dot get button. And we don't want to be able to hold the button, so we're going to push get, put, get button down. And key code is how you access the keyboard. We're going to use the space bar here. So key code dot space. All right, so if we push the space button, input, that's what I need. Oh, get key, that's what we need. Okay, so that's what I did wrong. I'm trying to pass a key into a button, so let's fix this. Get key down. There we go. Got rid of that error there. So, we're actually we're going to make this an if statement. And these are pretty common for dealing with Boolean logic if okay there we go so if key down space we're gonna say get component which you grab a component Ooh. Rigid body 2D, that's the object we added to it. Dot velocity equals new vector 2, 0, 5. Now, that should, uh, should alter the Y. See if this works. There's several different ways to skin a cat, and I'm not sure. Uh, it's been a little bit since I did. Okay, so that's saved. Let's go to Unity here. And let it compile, and then we'll see what's happening. Uh, might need to change that velocity to something times speed or times a direction, honestly. We'll see what we get here. All right, it's going here, so let's see. If I hit the space bar, I get nothing. It should be X and then Y, let's see here. Let's try this, let's try rigidbody.add force Extra two dot down times two uh, 
Uh, it's probably going to end up being a less than one value. We'll use a float there eventually. Just let's see if this works. course we gotta let it reload all the assemblies again not a all right so we're gonna go ahead and increase this because it's obviously not having an effect then we're going to add a second thing here, that's the force mode, and we're going to go force mode 2D dot impulse. This should do the trick. Jump back over to Unity here, let it recompile. We're going to go ahead and just unattach this for now and leave it unattached since we don't have any uh, motion to the right and we're trying to deal with the vertical right now. That way we can get a little bit our better idea of the movement here. So let's go ahead and hit play. And you'll see it trying to rise off the screen. Then when I tap down key, when I tap space bar, I get this nice bob. I feel like it's a little bit too strong. Like I want like a three jump gap between the top and the bottom. So let's go back into the code here. We'll reduce the strength to probably about seven or eight, I think. Let's try eight. Uh, eventually we'll change this to be a force button. That'll be alterable as well as the speed that we move at. Oops, that's not what I wanted to click on. There we go. And now we'll try this again. Um, I should have to press space a couple times to get it to go down further. And it's a change in momentum, so the faster I'm moving upwards, the further down I'll move. I feel like that's still a little strong for what I'm trying to accomplish, so we're going to go back to a half of that. I do like the buoyancy, how it's like popping up and down. That's pretty cool. Um, we're going to scale that back to four. In fact, let's go ahead and add that variable in now. Variables are amazing. We're going to call this one a float in case we end up doing a partial percentage. And we're going to call it um, dive strength. How about that? Equals. 4.0F and then we'll replace that here now that should work and in fact I think we want to get this dialed in so if we go public here then we can hit save and we'll actually have the option to change that on the fly while we're playing the game so we can go over here Now if I click on square, you can see it's added that item here so I can change this before I start or even after I start the simulation. Once I start it, if I change it, it'll revert back to what it was um, before. So don't think four is going to cut it. Actually. Let's try this. Let's go ahead and reduce the gravity because it's not really negative one. It's closer to negative. What's a 30 year body weight? We'll try that. This is uh, three quarters. It's not a third, but.
We're gonna have to reduce that some more. It's too much. Too much. Point. Maybe we should just put the strength back up at eight. I think we'll actually we'll change both of these: the gravity scale and. Okay, so that works. But here's the thing, is I intend this to be a mobile game in the long run, and there's no space key on a regular screen. What there is, however, is touches, but we can simulate that on the computer using a different tactic. And we're also going to use if input.get. We're going to do mouse button down, and we're going to do zero because that's the left click. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our code there, which we already like, place it here. And let's go ahead and get rid of the space bar. So we'll save that. I should be able to click the mouse. That's going to give me a, a little bit better simulation of like tapping than hitting the space bar. So let's go back to Unity here, open it up. It's a little bit better, a little bit more fluid, I think. I think the gravity is a little weak. Let's go ahead and shut that off. Let's get in here. We'll try that. In fact, let's go back to eight. Take this to 0.55. Uh, I know this seems like a lot of simple minutia, but these are the things that are really going to affect the game later. Uh, and they'll be easy enough to adjust for sure, but... Alright, so once I go off screen, I've already lost. How easy is it to keep, keep it from hitting the top? Hitting the bottom? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put the water to about here, right? And we'll put a sea floor down there. So that's basically the gist of it. I kind of went off into my own little world there for a minute. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well. That way you can get notified when we continue the series. I do do, I'm working on two games right now. Um, this is actually the second one, but I'm working on another one called Zombie, which you may have seen the videos I've done on that. You may not, but uh, I, I'm, I'm getting further in it, which uh, I like. So that one won't be too long before it's out. But. Uh, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Tech Numbers out.